this is the story on how I cool boy 77 encountered a very bad no good very awful demon I was just minding my own business hanging out at the local flea market the musket mart for all of your shopping needs for good prices crazy deals and very little competition because it is bought out every other chain with its massive power, Musket Mart. I was going about my usual business, checking out the DVDs and CDs section like an absolute nerd when I stumbled upon the initial, f the original first, fuck, the original first season of Big Time Rush. I could not believe it. When I was a child, it was my favorite show growing up. I loved it. I loved all of the characters, especially Gustavo, that sick frick. I immediately, without looking at any strange oddities found within the DVD, went up to the cash register, asked the cashier, how much is this beautiful, lovely DVD of Big Time Rush Season 1? And they said, oh, it is not that much, my good friend. It is only a single penny. But watch out. Last time I checked, that D D D that D that DVD was not supposed to be there before. I checked in with the big boys at the factory, and they said they had never shipped this product out. And I would, the cover is different from how it originally should be. I paid the cashier no mind, for they were just a silly fool, jealous of my beautiful collection of episodes of the hit cop com poverty show, Big Time Rush. I immediately with I immediately paid the single penny, ran out of the door, almost turned on the scary big alarm, but lucky for me, I'd already paid, got my receipt, and left. I immediately raced home, because the musket mart was only five miles away. I got there two minutes after I left the store. Super excited to play my big ass DVD of the Big Time Rush collectibles. I am... I noticed the cover, like the cashier had said, was a little bit different than I remembered it being. It was the four boys, but Kendall, my personal least favorite, instead of him smiling with the rest of his bandmates, he was frowning. He was frowning, very sadly, very solemnly. But personally, my theory was that it was very angrily. Once again, I decided to pay it no mind, for I am a naive boy, and I can get myself in the trouble and get myself out because I am the protagonist of this wacky story we call life. Anyways, I checked before I popped in a DVD, I checked the back, and it said, and it said in big orange letters, TURN BACK NOW. I was initially confused, but thought that, hey, maybe this was a special edition Halloween version of this, of the packaging, which would explain why the candle in the mirror of the CD was very scary looking. I did not care to check into the issue further, and I played the CD into my DVD player. It started out as normal. It was the menu screen where you could select your episode. I started with the first one because the first one was indeed my favorite. Although I still followed it pr after the first episode, and never captured, the subsequent episodes never captured the same magic that the first episode provided. Truly, the pilot was the top of its class. Anyways, I selected episode one, and in came the most iconic theme song to any television show ever. That was on Nickelodeon and was also called Big Time Rush. Uh, 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 uh. 
I sung along with it, but I noticed in the first verse when it says, Bring down, play it straight, don't look back, don't hesitate. The CD had seemed to have paused. It was just saying, Don't look back, don't look back, don't look back, don't look back, don't look back. I was very, very confused, but I didn't really care that much, so whatever. Trying to go up to my DVD player to check if there was anything wrong, I noticed that the four boys who were initially not on the screen together were all there at once, looking at the camera. Then, Carlos, the fun-loving goofball of the group, his eyes, oh how those eyes looked so bad and not good whatsoever. I was scared. I was scared of those eyes. They were hyper-realistic, which meant they were realistic like real eyes, but hyper, so they were more realistic than they usually are. But that entire whole description sort of gets nullified by the fact that they were all red and bloody. Blood was seeping out of them like a little waterfall. Like a little Niagara Falls in his eyes. It was pretty spooky, might I add. He looked at the screen with these wacky eyes and he said, this boy must be taken. I was very confused because this, as you may know, is not part of the theme song. I was very confused. Then Logan, the brainiac of the group, huddled around with the other boys and, s and I could just tell they were plotting a scheme to murder me. I screamed. Ah, at the television screen. I was running around the TV room frantically, wondering wherever the heck must it be happening that I am trying to do. Then, my greatest friend and brother, Michael, walked into the room, clearly distressed by my distress. He screamed, What is going on, my good friend and brother, the narrator? I replied, Those darn boys are planning to murder me in my sleep or awake. Now Michael, he is a man of reason, a man of logic in fact, and he merely goes up to me and says, Now that is a load of hogwash, balderdash, doohickey. I do not believe that those beautiful, fun-loving boys of four are plotting to kill you. That is just not within their character. I will go up to the TV and ask them individually if they are plotting your death. He walks up to the TV, completely unaware of the fact that nothing was right, and he said to the TV screen, My beautiful children, of pop culture fame, I ask you this one question. Are you planning to murder my best friend and brother? James, the bad boy of the group, uncharacteristically responded with a sheepish, No. Kendall, the w least favorite, also replied no. Logan, the smart one, replied no as well. But Carlos, oh that bastard Carlos, he runs up into the camera. My brother Michael is completely confused and with a single hand he reaches into the television screen, grabs my friend Michael by the throat, throwing him into the TV. I screamed louder than any boy had ever screamed before. Michael, my good friend Michael, what are these good boys going to do to you? Michael, completely sh in shock at the fact that this is indeed happening at this current moment, simply responds with nothing. As the boys throw him, in, throw him deep into the tea, into the background, and all proceed to gang up on him and beat him up until he died in a bloody fashion. I... The being the rational one at this point, because I was the only one that wasn't completely insane and or dead, 
decide to make a mad dash for the exit of this room. But the boys, oh, those boys, they saw me. They saw me trying to escape. They would not let that happen. They all jump out of the TV screen like Mario in Super Mario 64 for the Nintendo 64 or Mario from Nintendo 64 DS for the Nintendo 64 DS. And they all come chasing at me. You do not know the architecture of my house, so I had to run out of there in order to get them lost behind. But I was paranoid. I did not want them to kill me, the beautiful boy that I am. And so I start running. I ran out of my house. I ran out of my neighborhood. I ran out of my city, my state, my, G my district, my country, my continent. And pretty soon I was in Russia and I took a rocket to space. There I would be safe from those dreadful boys. But in my beautiful rocket up in space, I happened to see these four mysterious creatures barreling towards the ship. It was them! It was them! Oh no, what must I do now? I was scared, very sad, and I did not know what to do. I just merely accepted my fate as they crashed into the rocket ship, killing me and the rocket ship. The boys survived, landing on the earth as a meteorite. But that's not the worst part. The worst part is that I am you, and this will happen to you tomorrow when you decide to go to the beautifully landscaped and wonderfully well-lit musket market available for all your marketing needs, where you will go and you will get a cursed copy of the Big Time Rush CD unaware of what will happen to you.